It's a Friday edition here on Zero Block 30. And today we have four rounds in the old magazine. Round number one. Of course, you know, we're going to talk about military. And I assume if you're listening like us, you're going to need a little bit of levity. But in this round, there are some sex craved spiders in Ireland that will go zero to 60 miles an hour in no time. Bite you, bang each other's brains out. Which leads us to our weekend safety brief because we've got a little bit of a 96 coming up. Round number two. Only thing Kate has written is fart story. So that should be interesting. Round number three, Afghanistan updates. We're going to have some quick bullet points. And then we're going to try to shift um, and do a little bit lighter show for you. We have some doggy bag questions um, and all that stuff. Hopefully this will be a more enjoyable show than a super heavy show like the last few have been. And round number four. Which brings us to the 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 little, 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 which brings us to the saga of the congressman from Oklahoma named Mark Wayne. You would think that that's it, that has to at least be two words. No, my friends, that's one. Mark Wayne Mullen. That's right, Mark Wayne, and he went John Wayne on everybody's asses in Afghanistan, or tried to at least. They can't find him. I think still it, I, he popped up. He finally oh, he, popped he's up. back. Still an interesting story, though. I can't wait. Who's to back of the him. week? John Wayne. John Wayne. Or, oh, or John excuse Wayne. me, Mark Wayne. Mark Wayne. One of those Waynes. Oh, yeah. Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. Um, they're it's back. Wayne's world. We're just living in it. Am I right? <laughs> not, not to be confused with John Wayne Bobbitt, right? Right. Do you guys buy? I don't think John Wayne gets all kinds of credit. He doesn't look that manly to me. Like if I saw John Wayne, I would think I could whoop his ass. Well, I think everyone's perception of him was based on the characters he played, right? And the way he spoke and that deep baritone voice. And he was always playing these rough and tumbled characters. And I think that's how he's framed. But I could see how maybe you look at him and say, yeah, you're not that bad. You know what John Wayne reminds me of? I feel like every group of kids growing up had that one. There's like that one dad in the neighborhood who was kind of the scary dad. Yeah. Like you never saw him laughing or smiling. He was always like, close the goddamn door, Kenny. You know, you're not like, air oh. conditioned in the neighborhood. Yeah. Scary dad. I feel like John Wayne has big time scary dad vibes. Mm. Yeah, I think he's one of those guys. that's kind of like a golfer, you know, like somebody that just starts out golfing. And so they're going to go and they're going to buy the most golfing looking clothes. Basically, they're going to dress like cons and they're going to go out there and they're going to think they're going to shoot better because they're dressed like a golfer. John Wayne does that with toughness. Like he throws on a cowboy hat and a vest and he's like, oh, now I'm tough. I could have whooped John Wayne's ass while I was wearing some bird dogs because bird dogs are incredibly comfortable. They are the softest little bathing suit that I've worn and I'm wearing it every single day this summer. They have all kinds of colors, whether you like if you're like my guy, Trent, who just likes to wear khakis. They have that. If you like if you're like me and bright colors, they have that to the moon. Make sure you go to birddogs.com. Use the promo code zero. It is a great, great product. If you've never worn one, they're legitimately amazing. They stole Lululemon's designer. Cons are a huge Lululemon guy. Used to be. Yes, but I'm also friends with the guys at Bird Dogs, so I feel like it's okay. Yeah. And Pat, oh, my I had to man, drop Pat. that he was friends. Name drop yeah. cons. Wow. My goodness. Sick. Sorry, I haven't wow. dropped a name in a while. I had to bring it back. I, yeah, at I least gotta a stay week. on brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. My man Every- Pat's been dropping his wagon in his he got camouflage bird dogs that he's oh. wearing that they're really cool looking. Yeah. And that's good for Kate because um he doesn't even have to wear underwear there. So it's built in underwear, True. which is an absolute game changer. Kate, that's one thing I know about Kate. She's constantly worried if people are wearing underwear. She doesn't like it when they do. So Mm -hmm. Bird Dogs takes that out. She doesn't even have to ask if you're wearing Bird Dogs. You just can assume, which is very, very nice. Make sure you go to birddogs.com. Enter the promo code uh, zero and you're going to get free whistle football. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm so excited. about when I read it earlier this week, I forgot about the whistle football. I have a whistle football. been chunking that thing all around the old pool. Cardi can do one handed grabs now off the diving board of the whistle ball and throw it back all before hitting the water. It's incredible. So much fun. I think that's fantastic that Cardi's doing the one handed grabs in the pool because nothing looks cooler in front of your friends. But I have to take a stand. I'm so tired and maybe it's dying out a little bit. I'm tired of people oohing and on about receivers in the NFL making one handed grabs in warm ups when it doesn't matter at all. Like, okay, yeah, they're professional athletes with strong hands. They should be able to do that. I'm over it. I don't care that you make money. Also, they're not doing it because their hands are doing it because the gloves. Right. Do it without gloves. Yeah. There's, there's definitely some tack on those gloves, 
I'm not impressed anymore. You know, Odell Beckham Jr. You know? I'm only impressed if it whistles like a bird dog's football. God damn it. It does you know. right there. And you can get it with the promo code zero. Yeah. You're going to love all that stuff. Birddogs.com promo code zero. All right, let's get going with the actual show because there's a lot of things happening in the world uh, where for the last couple of weeks, we really had tunnel vision on what's going on in Afghanistan. We're going to brighten that horizon out a little bit. Kate is well, I guess all you guys, really, you're in the midst of a we big are time soaking storm. soaking wet, chaps. Mm-hmm. Not in no, a good way. Not in a good, not in the mm-hmm. great way. Not not in the kind of way you get when somebody tells you their high as bab score. Mm-hmm. You know, this is that's more of a, mm-hmm. a Babadook kind when of When you were trying to date somebody military, did you focus more on the the overall score or did you go with GT score? Oh, overall. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Big time overall. Cause mm-hmm. you got to get a ra- well-rounded mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. Well-rounded. That's exactly right. But no, I just want to talk really quick. Obviously hurricane Ida now post-tropical depression or what have you ha- came through the Northeast last night. If you're down South and you dealt with it, you're probably going to roll your eyes. Cause we're like, it's so bad up here. Uh, Cause I know you had it much worse, but Holy shit balls. Mm-hmm. First of all, I like live in this little bubble where I don't pay attention Yesterday, it started getting cloudy and I'm, I get off the train to pick up my son from daycare. And I'm like, oh, it looks like it might rain tonight. Like, I didn't even realize what was about to happen. I get home. The flooding starts. Our street becomes a river. I'm I'm going out into the porch watching cars. And that's what not is- an exaggeration. It was no. like it was very, a very deep. river. Our parking garage is below the building. All of a sudden, the neighbors are in the hallway. All the cars on whatever level, they're all flooding. They're all flooding. Get your cars out. But there was nowhere to get your cars. I still, ignorance is bliss. I still have not gone down there to check on ours. (laughs) No, it's like a bank account when you're in college. You don't look at that thing and it's not a problem. (laughs) I don't want to know. And you know me with my old car. Was it towed? Was it it still there? I don't know. (laughs) Hard to say. So this I one's just, newer. You, you have a lot more money tied up into this one. This is a brand new. A lot, lot more blood, <laughs> yeah. blood, sweat and tears, too. No, and I we all were remember. very involved in this car. Exactly. So we're all invested. Exactly. So I'll have to let you guys know eventually. But Please. I look out. There's a river. There's lightning. There's tornado watches and mornings and all this stuff. Um, Philadelphia. My cousin lives on the 14th floor of a she, she it's a walk up now. The elevators are broken. They just mm. got a warning telling them they all had to get out of the building like immediately. She said the whole city is such like a, a risk in penthouse life, too. Like, if oh, you're like, yeah. oh, I got the penthouse and, and this tall building. The things go down. Next thing you know, you got a rod going down 90 floors. Fuck that. Mm. Exactly. It's crazy. But the, the videos from New York and Hoboken and I mean, entire highways just covered the subways completely soaked. I couldn't go into work today because the trains are out. Um, just absolutely nutty flooding. Yeah, so. flooding in Hoboken is nothing new, but it was especially bad uh, last night. I will say. There were some deaths in Queens and Elizabeth, I heard, from people mm-hmm. in basement apartments. So that's really sad. Oh, my God. But this is just kind of like, you know. Nine from what I saw. Nine yeah. deaths so far. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Kate, you kind of mentioned, like, the people down south kind of scoffing at us. This is the same way when people, like, in Texas, when Chaps when had all that snow. There, and we, yeah. we, were, we all thought, like, what's the big deal? We're not used to hurricanes. There were tornadoes, legitimate tornadoes videos I saw that went through New Jersey, parts of New On Jersey. The turnpike, that, you see the toll booth with tornado going by it. Yeah, Crazy. destroyed homes. Very upsetting. I'm sorry to see that that happened. Hopefully those people are well insured and, and you know, just material damage and nobody's. Uh, lives were lost. But yeah, it was a really crazy scene uh, up in the greater New York City, New Jersey area last night, to say the least. Our yeah. CFO had three feet of water in her basement. Uh, just mm. that. And Stephen Che, his he house He had flooded. cars down his road and his house and the cars were all messed up and jacked up. Terrible situation. Also, that's going on in Haiti. New Orleans is going to be without power for at least a month. One of my Jaguar pals there um, lives in Louisiana. He said that they told him you could be looking at at least two months without power mm, because oh my God. one of their communications, the two major communication towers that go along the Mississippi, both collapsed and fell into the Mississippi. Oh so they have to Weesh. rebuild it completely. He's already out of like perishable food items. They just weren't like you don't think that that's going to happen. And like mm. that, because Louisiana and Florida, the Panhandle, you get storms all the time. What do you do, man? Like you got to infrastructure week needs to come back in a big way. Infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. They, well, this is a huge wake up call. They thought New York thought after Sandy, they made all these corrections. Yes. And spent billions and billions. So it would never happen. New again. Orleans, too, after Katrina. And it happened again. It just happened like in 10 seconds flat. Everything there's there's a rat. Did you see the video? There's a rat dragging a crab 
down the subway mm. thing. There's a rat doing. I, I, posted a, rats relentless. I posted a video meme about that one where the water all around the rat is 2020 and 2021. And the rat is us because college football is back tonight. Yeah, <laughs> still feeling good. Yeah, the rat I'm enjoying a little swim. I'm into it. I'm into How it. are you feeling? I am not feeling good. Thank you very much <laughs> yeah. for asking. We appreciate that a lot. So there is a lot of things going on and it's very, very sad that that's what's happening. But you're right, cons. People are always bitching about my, oh, the weather here. It doesn't compare here. We're not ready for it. We weren't ready for a right. hurricane here. Like we yeah. would be ready for a hurricane, but we weren't ready for snow. Five right. inches of snow take us out for a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, everybody's got. I know. All, I, I know. I get it. clowned on for mentioning my pool, huh. but I turned on these fountains because we have these decorative fountains that I didn't know about. Found out about that uh, the other day. Turned you them just on. Just found out about that? Yeah, no idea. Like it was this <laughs> button and it said fountains. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I just never touched it because I mean, I don't know a lot about pools at all. Sure. And when you go back there and look at it, there's all kinds of tubes and pipes going all over the place. I'm not fucking with anything as long as it looks clean. I'm just going to let that be and let the pool guy take care of it. Mm -hmm. But I go out there and I was like, I wonder what this is. I turn it on. It kind of sputtered. And then I called the pool guys like, hey, the fountains are sputtering. He's like, oh, yeah, because those fountain pipes, they cracked during the storm that was down oh, here. Yeah. So the wow. old owner. Fraud. Wow. Because yeah. he was supposed to reveal that in the cell. Right. Right. Especially because I feel like that's something that wouldn't necessarily be detected during an inspection. So it would be on the owner to speak up and say something. House inspectors, by the way, criminals like they don't do shit. Those guys oh, yeah. just walk around and take pictures. They're like, oh, this is cool. This, uh, that'll be 500 bucks. Fuck mm -hmm. you. You mm -hmm. didn't do it. You walked around my roof and played on Instagram like you didn't yeah. do anything. I see you up there playing Subway Surfer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy yeah. And then town. I mean, that's that screws everybody. It screws the person trying to sell their house because they still got to pay for that. And then it screws the new homeowners because they walk into a situation where they think everything's hunky dory. And lo and behold, they find these problems like crack pipes to their fountains. And now their pool isn't up to snuff. Well, mm -hmm. so if your house flooded, or you're going through a tough time. Just remember, Chaps' pool fountains also going through a tough yeah, time right serious. now. So. Yeah, exactly. And my filter is clogged with spiders, <laughs> oh, but luckily they're not the horny spiders in, in Ireland. Am I right, Kate? Kate has a bunch of Irish relatives. She is a Manion after all, which is a very Irish name. So we wanted to bring Kate in to make sure that she talks about the horniest spiders in Ireland. Kate, what do you got? True. This is true. First of all, this this week is the anniversary of the last time I was in Ireland a few years ago with all the ladies in my family. A whole big group of us went. No boys allowed. I actually uh -huh. saw that on Twitter when I went to your profile. It had like these shamrocks that dropped down instead of confetti on your birthday. <laughs> it's like happy Ireland anniversary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I've been to Ireland several times. Once on a layover coming home from Afghanistan, too. We were not Wait, allowed to have beer. Does that count? No. How I long were you there? Yeah. How long were you there? Only maybe like 10 hours. No, doesn't count. No, no, it doesn't count. We weren't. What, even what's the I think, threshold? What, what, what would count I think it's got to be? I think it's got to be over. Yeah, I would say 48 hours in yeah. order to count being there. You got to be out in 48 hours. And if it, you land on a military base, you had to have gone out in town twice. Yes, yes, I agree completely. But you can't be like, oh, I've been to Germany. Bitch, you were at Ramstein for five hours. You haven't mm -hmm. been to Germany. <laughs> No, no, I do. I still have family in Galway. Uh, they're a damn delight. One of them is my age and the whole comedy. It just just love whatever. Anyway, so, so totally ties. I love when Kate just said sentences and doesn't finish them. She just we just it's just left <laughs> up personal to us thing. to figure it out. Yeah. It's a personal thing. Anyway, uh, this is from the Irish Post. Chaps wanted me to do this in an Irish accent. You better. And I feel like I can't do it without being are, extremely offensively. Are you shitting me with the amount of stuff that you make me read in different? And now this is what you're going to do. This okay, is the hill okay. You're dying on. Okay. Oh, as if spiders couldn't get any more scary. What with the legs and all. At the end of August, Ireland faces being invaded by a swarm of sexually aggressive fist size Aratagena erratica, aka giant hole spiders, ready to make your skin crawl. And these aren't just any sex crazed fist size spiders. These ones can apparently go from zero to 60 in one second. I can't believe chaps. You didn't say zero to 69 in one second with this story. Well, I didn't want to lie. I have integrity. Very yeah, I didn't want to lie. I don't want to adjust scientific stuff. According to experts, these eight legged freaks were on the prowl for a mate. So keep your eyes peeled. As well First of as all, I don't like that they're you. calling them eight legged freaks. Very rude. We, don't, rude. we do not leg shame on this podcast. Mm. The male Shout out to my guy. Uh, one <laughs> that dude that was on the show that uh, had his leg removed. Shout out to him. 
Shout out to him. In <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. UK um, goofy. Le- leggy blonde. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, leggy blonde. Trying to remember. Yeah. Give him a follow on Insta. Anyways, these ha- Irish house spiders, they get about three inches large. And Ireland's not known for having like these crazy exotic animals that are. So a three inch spider there is kind of a big deal. From August to September, they start coming. These these ha- literally <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. they start coming out of the woodwork and they're everywhere, all over people's houses. I'm I typed the in the, with their woodwork. <laughs> I typed in in the Twitter search bar, Ireland plus spider. And it's tons of Irish people tweeting about these spiders all over their houses. And they're like, oh, my God, what the hell is this? What? I didn't even know we had spiders this big. Anyways, oh, who you fuck? Come here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, it's a teacher. It's a teacher. It's a I killed a spider. Who do you apologize to? Absolutely nobody. <laughs> <laughs> they come out August to September. The male spiders have the urge to mate and they start looking around for females. That's why they're coming out of the woodworks there. They're not dangerous, but they have biting fangs. It feels like a wasp sting. In recent years, there have been reports of people. This is the thing. They interviewed a bug specialist, an entomologist, whatever it's called. He said the most injuries from these spiders is people injuring themselves by being startled by them. So yeah. people crashing through patio doors, um, <laughs> falling over coffee tables, all sorts of shit. And this the is the reason why I included the story. I didn't tell you guys because I wanted it to be super fresh. Last night, we had an international incident in my bedroom. An, just oh. an absolute fiasco of epic proportions. I I told you guys in the group chat, I'm like, I feel very drained after everything that's going on and just being so locked into my phone. Last night, Annalise and I lay down to watch TV. At the end of the night, like eight, 30 Cardi goes to bed. Kelsey does her own thing. And we are just chilling in our room. That's our time to like focus on our marriage, focus on our friendship and things like that. Fuck. So we go to, uh, we're watching, we go to from Jeopardy or watching a show. We first lay down and it's like eight 30 first, like the dogs are put up cats in there, sprinkled dinkles hanging out with us. She lays down for reeks out and she's not like overly emotional or like goes into hysterics often scorpion hysterical am i right no jumps up on the bed starts shaking her head ripping her earrings out and she's like oh my god oh my god and i i'm like what 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 happened and she's like a bug flew directly into my ear and I can oh, hear it no. and, it's, and it's walking in my ear. I had to go get this fucking thing, uh, this little gun, squirt gun thing that has a long tube, put it in Annalise's ear and she's like still going bananas in the fucking bathroom, going crazy, crazy, crazy. And I'm like, just stick your head over the tub so I can use this thing. And we're doing it. A little fucking bug flies out of her ear, like into the tub. And she was like, that was legitimately the most grossed out I've ever been in my life. And she laid back down after it was all done. And she had like dried her face off from all the water. I was shooting everywhere. And she was like, I'm, I'm legitimately horrified, horrified right now. Yeah. And then and the she problem- didn't, well, I had the TV on. So we're watching Chip and Joanna and she's still like, she just laid there and essentially looked at the ceiling for like two hours. <laughs> I feel like the problem on the back end of that is that any little movement near her ear, she probably thought it was another bug and just paranoid the rest of the night. Exactly. It's like when somebody starts talking about lice, you feel like you have them in your hair. Right, Kate? Mm Want to hear something gross? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, And all the listeners do, too. I Mm -hmm. don't like to brag. I was in this special singing group when I was a kid. And I'll just call them Mr. And Mrs. B. They were my singing coaches. I had singing coaches to get me to the, it was like the, you made it to County and then to state for like singing or whatever. And they were my singing coaches. They were this lovely little old couple. And I stayed in touch with them throughout the rest of my life. Pretty much. We became pen pals. So even though that they stopped, this stopped in fifth grade, wrote them for years, even when I was in the Marine Corps. Um, And then they started getting really old and, you know, no longer in contact. Um, but one of the final letters, <laughs> he, he was hmm. out. Mr. B was out in the garden uh, and this was her writing me this. He got a, like one of those earwigs that they're called or whatever. Mm. You know what I'm talking They have the pinchers mm-hmm. on the back. Mm-hmm. It turns out a couple of weeks later, he starts feeling sick. His whole side, of it, there was a bug so deep in his ear. It was like living in his fucking head. 
and they had to like get it taken out. Yeah. That's like a thing that happens to people. I love watching those videos on TikTok where there's like a roach embedded in somebody's ear or something like that. I watched the the earwax, the earwax ones where they squirted in and the big clump of earwax. And I wonder how you let it get to that point. It's there was one with, well, it's because you're fucking, Oh, sorry, Nick, go ahead. It was one with someone. There was something in someone's tongue. It was living in Mm. their tongue. Oh Yeah. I love Brutal. that kind of shit. I would kill to have a big, big ass cyst where I could pop it. And yeah. Go. God, that one. Oh, that'd be that, awesome. That one. This is the last thing we'll do on this kind of stuff where he squeezes it and it shoots all over the mirror. Like yes. it's a legitimate hose coming out. It's just yeah. absolutely. I would. I mean, that would just really well, this make was my the light round to really. Yeah. But the bug, to- that, hold on the bug that reminded me that one time <laughs> this, this, uh, these couple kids in my uh, neighborhood uh, growing up, they were in the woods somewhere near a lake and i guess this girl she always used to wear this one little special ring and it fell off and she didn't realize it so her friend went back the next day and he got attacked by bees and he died Jeez, louise that sounds like a movie mm-hmm. it's my girl yeah my girl don't that's yes, actually that was just a plus so and so legitimately so sad though when she that's, loses that mood oh. ring and he goes in there oh goodness and oh, then she puts his glasses coffin? back on oh, he oh. needs his glasses he needs his glasses he needs his glasses mm-hmm. That's how I feel Crushed. when I'm wandering around my house without my glasses. My house that I actually got through my good friends at Cross Country Mortgage. They're much like us here at Barstool. They're a people first group. They're dedicated to the fundamentals of mortgage lending, which is a fast, convenient, and less stressful home financing option. And you can refinance there as well. If you're a homeowner and haven't refinanced recently, you might be leaving thousands, if not tens of thousands. Heck, who knows? Could be hundreds of thousands of dollars on the net. I would venture to say that's for the other podcast. I would say that's probably for uh, foreplay. My more than us here we aren't leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table there's just no way um, so but but to us every dollar counts like for the well, if you the- think about the over the course of an entire mortgage that can add up so it could be a hundred hundreds of thousands of dollars oh, when i signed my first house you, yeah, you're absolutely right it is uh could be hundreds of thousands because when i f- signed my first one when i looked at the actual seat because you look at the sale price and what you're financing when you're actually done you pay like fucking double of what you actually it's absurd for. same it's thing absurd. with the car like you could be like oh this is a thirty thousand dollar car you look at the payment you're like oh i'm paying 55 grand for this shit <laughs> yeah this, yeah, you, this thing you sucks really it's to... a camera <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> cameras are very good cars if they want to advertise too but right now it's cross-country mortgage the rates are at an all-time low and they may never be this low again you know there's a lot of times that those kind of phrases are not true like in ads and things like that i this could be true. I mean, though, the way that how low the rates are right now, they might never get back to this point again. Um, call us today. Call them today for a fast free coat for our partners that save you a lot of money and you will get a free a home evaluation, which is great just for calling. You must go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash Barstool to learn more about your future home buying experience or refinance your current mortgage. Cross Country Mortgage LLC in MLS 3029. All loans are subject to underwriting approval. www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org is where you go to check that out. Yes, Kate. I want to say something. You know what that last round was? You know what the spider round was? Hmm. You, you ever have a friend or a loved one, something bad happens in their life hmm. and you're trying to cheer them up, but you're in your head, you're like, oh, God, I don't know how to cheer. Okay, you're trying to be all wacky and goofy, and then they're uh, you're making it worse. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're like Afghanistan's tough, but check out these Irish fucking spiders, everybody. Big news, you got to kid. You can't just have tunnel vision, Kate. People forget True. that. If you get True. into the tunnel vision, you're in the fatal funnel. You got to keep <laughs> your head on a swivel. You just, just got to look our around. Our intentions were good. Gosh darn it. As they say in Ireland, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And I like how Kate trusts me, too. Like I sent her this link of like, oh, let's talk about Irish spiders that like to fuck. And she's like. OK, even though she knows probably <laughs> deep down, that's a terrible subject for a podcast, but we made it work. And I just wanted to tie in Annalisa's stuff without telling you guys, because I came in in the clutch again. Lots. And I honestly believe my time in combat has made me a much better husband and a much better dad of responding in stressful situations with yeah. and, and being able to do it. Kelsey had a seizure one time. I didn't even I was just like, I'm in there. I'm doing Cardi's <laughs> falling down the fucking stairs. I'll jump up out of the couch. Legitimately, one time, Cons, I know how you joke. I'm not an athlete. No, Cardi I remember fell down the story, stair, yeah. Yeah. jumped down, saved McCartney for her head, uh, their head from smashing into the wood floor. Could have been bad. 
Could have been mm-hmm. bad, been but bad. over there, I, I credit that to the Marine Corps. Big time. Um, all right, let's move on to round number two, which was is what? What is round number two? Round number two is a fart story. My ah, friends. yes, the old this fart is, story. You got you, so judgmental there and then you put in fart story. Yeah, I'm judging your spider topic so hard. And then I'm like, wait, Bill Brown Harris is fart. This story. is this is trash. He's not putting any effort anyways. Let's talk farts. First of all, farts. <laughs> you ever have one that was super embarrassing? All the time. Like what? Me right? at Rough and Rowdy. Did, did me just, at Rough and Rowdy is one of the we worst just ones. And we got done a Rough and Rowdy. It was the military one. And I bent down to pick something up. And it literally just came out so crazy. Um, another time was that this, this I was like hanging out with these wholesome kids in college one night, which was rare for me. They were all watching a movie and there was a break between movies. And I thought it would be hilarious to rip a huge fart. And that was not the right crowd. This is like a Christian wholesome crowd. Who, like tried to take me. So I, cri- Christians don't fart. What? Uh, well, the way I did it, it was. <laughs> oh, they found on that big time. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. a huge. I was like, hey, everybody. And, and the room was just Thou shalt not I'm, bark one. Jesus yeah. <laughs> was not only pure of heart. He was pure of flatulence of, yeah. as well. And then I had I, one in church. Be, I would love to smell Jesus fart. See what that's what oh. he's cooking. He roses, had to have. He roses and petunias. Mm-hmm. I do think it probably smelled like roses. Yeah, mm-hmm. olive oil heavy diet too. So I wouldn't be yeah, that. Bad. Yeah, it wouldn't be that bad. Clean Anyways, tapered shits. <laughs> uh, a Florida woman charged with threatening a man with a knife after he ripped on her for farting loudly in the checkout line of a convenience store. She's now free as the wind. So no more worrying there. After I have. a. Can, can I tell you, these are my favorite. If, I don't know if this one was a prank, if it was an actual real fart. I I follow four accounts on TikTok because I just like to go to the Discover page. One of them is this fella who always goes to like Walmart and has the fart noise machine. And he'll like bend over and act like he farted. And the people's faces when he do- <laughs> I know it's like the most simplistic juvenile humor. I do not care. Yeah. I like to go take a couple three cheese, sit back, watch fart talks and just giggle my dick off. It's my favorite. Well, I used to work facilities for an office building and the office building it was like all these different companies on the different floors. But I worked on the ground level when you first came in the lobby and there was this big thing of plants in this big open <laughs> lobby. Well, I would sit at this little computer desk kind of in the lobby. I put I had a remote control fart machine. And people from the different companies would always gather and talk around the plants, kind of. And I would have this remote control thing that would make it fart, fart sound. And they'd always be like, huh, like a real who done it. And I like got me through the summertime. It it's great. just so much fun. Just a little yeah. fart goofing never hurt anyone at huh. all. I mean, I've been in. That- well, Kate- in this story, Kate- that's not the case. <laughs> True. But Kate, I remember when we went to D.C. and you were wearing your red outfit and you're like, this red outfit really holds the old fart, fart runes and and. You, that does happen. Like for me, I've been at churches where b- before I joined the Marine Corps, when I would go to church consistently, where it was just wooden pews and I would have on like actual slacks with like a tighter belt. And it's like it keeps all that stuff in. And that feeling when you think it's going to be a little SBD action and you could just blame it on any one of the eight people around you when really you're the epicenter of it all. And it's not an SBD mm, and it actually worst. barks off the hardwood oak pews in there. Oh, oh, embarrassing. Marie See, that's what Charlie's. happens to me. That's what happens to me in, in bed at evening when I think it's going to be a quiet. In fact, it makes a noise. And then much like this story, I think Alex would like to get a knife and attack me. I'm legitimately surprised that she does. She seems like yeah, one more fart could send her the, over the edge. Yeah. The worst uniform for farts has to be that Navy all whites. If you're having mm. a rough day, you oh, yeah. be so fucking paranoid. What in that a thing. stupid uniform that yeah. is. I mm-hmm. mean, we've been really nice to the Navy. That all white stuff has got to go. What are you doing? I don't know. Anyway, and the little hats that they wear, like put, that you can put beans in. Yes, those hats stink. Get new hats, Navy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this woman is in line at the dollar store. She rips a huge fart. This guy's like, no, oh, he's ripping huge farts. Well, so she whips out a knife and she starts threatening him. But after years of legal wrangling, prosecutors dropped the felony aggravated assault with a deadly weapon charge, a silent but deadly weapon charge, folks, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. against Shanetta Wilson, age 40 of Broward County, classic Broward County goof. Oh, big way. time. Yeah. Uh, uh, the prosecution's move to abandon the case came after Wilson, the or after John Walker, the victim, just stopped showing up to his pretrial stuff. So she got off the hook. Um, they had a verbal dispute in, Will- in reference to Wilson farting loudly during the argument. She allegedly removed a small knife from her purse, opened the weapon and told Walker she was going to gut him. Walker told cops he feared being stabbed by her and that she pulled back her right hand as if she was going to attack. She's a mother of four. 
Uh, and so that didn't go over very well, but she's off the hook now because he just stopped showing up kind of, but I, I absolutely that. think she should be off the hook too, because if you're a mother of four and, this, and she's 40 now line. and she's 37, so she has four kids and she's there. She just never gets a moment to herself. She must be having a rough day and she lets one bark and then you're going to stab somebody. I got to say this woman, wild card, just let an her, absolute wild let card. Let her fart. The, mm-hmm. How dare you call her out for it? Yeah, I agree. So I'm glad she's off the hook. For and that, that guy needs to grow up. Don't I mean, don't act so fucking insulted. Everybody does it. You, It is a weird thing to think about. Everybody reaches back and wipes their butthole like that is weird. Objectively. Sure. It is. Yeah, sure. We'll is. stand by that statement Something to think about. That was Listen, I'm just trying, not to, just I'm trying, just trying to not to say anything that's going to get me in trouble later. Where I'm defending anybody farting because can I tell you something for me? You want to know the most outrageous fact of all time? Of course I do. Yes. Annalise and I have been married for 12 years. I have never heard her fart. Never. Wow. And I tell her, I'm like, babe, I don't care. You let them rip. If you, I don't want your belly to hurt. I'm not, I'm not selfish. Mm. If you want to let them rip. And she's like, I just, I just don't need to. I've actually never farted in front of Pat. He never. I mean, he hmm. he watched me shit myself while I was having a baby, but you've never counts. farted in front of Pat. Nope. I thought you'd definitely be a fart goofer. I know me. Like some me of those fart know. talks where people, those couples are just going back and forth and spraying ass all over each other. Grow well, up. Well, like, that that's was my too previous much. relationship and then I got divorced. So I was like, maybe I should reel in the farts this time, you know, ah. so trying something new. Keep things romantic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you're into that kind of thing. All right, let's actually move into some super serious. T- what a <laughs> normally we have trouble shifting from serious to not serious. We're going to give it our best shot here because this is actually important news. It's the updates from Afghanistan. We've been following it all week and there is quite a bit of updates because the last plane officially left Afghanistan. We officially have that. There is no more U.S. troops in Afghanistan. Kate, walk us through what's currently going on. Yeah, could, I'm just going to go through some bullet points of here's the latest with what's happening there. I, mean, I still want to keep following this. I don't want Afghanistan to fall. Like, I, I mean, I could never fall off our radar, but I want to keep bringing up little stories of it. More than two dozen students who attend San Juan Unified School District near Sacramento remain in Afghanistan days after the last military planes left the country. The 27 students from 19 different families are of all age levels from elementary school to high school, and they were in Afghanistan for personal reasons, most visiting relatives over the summer break. They were all scheduled to come back right before school started. Um, So that's a case that I know they're following really closely. Uh, According to an admission obtained from the State Department, Biden officials recently directed federal agencies to scrub their websites of official reports detailing the $82.9 billion in military equipment and training provided to Afghan security forces since 2001. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. The scrubbed reports included details accounting what the U.S. had provided to Afghan forces. For example... 208 aircraft and helicopters. We've seen those in some uh, some other teams' hands recently. 75,000 war vehicles, including 22 Humvees, 50,000 tactical vehicles, 1,000 mine-resistant vehicles, 600,000 weapons, 350,000 M4 and M16s, 60,000 machine guns, 25,000 grenade launchers, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Good one, I just want to say, Kate, all those numbers? unbelievable numbers. numbers reading. That was you know, absolutely Kate- they're rounded, but still, yeah, okay, the round numbers, they were but rounded. Still were proud is what of it was. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but still, uh, credit where it's due. The State Department said, yes, we did remove the reports, but it was only to protect our Afghan allies. Okay, oh, guys, shut up. Shut, shut up. up. Uh, the State Department, speaking of, said that 100. Oh, fuck. Here you we guys go. Ah, I love that. The numbers. I love that. This happens to me when I brag about how good I can read an ad read said that of the 124,000 evacuees from Afghanistan. Oh, here comes a hard one. 31,107 have arrived in the U.S. between the 17th and 31st of August. Of those, almost 24,000 are at risk. No, Afghans, no. What does that number say? Including 23,800. 23, yeah, let's just keep it moving because this is actually pretty serious. Yeah, so, um, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Anyways, of those, a, a whole lot of them, the bulk of them are special immigrant visa holders. They are people who are at risk. Um, quick thing, people, we are getting so many DMs. I'm getting tons of them. How can I help? How yeah. can I help? I don't want to sound like a dick. Google, how can I help Afghans in my area? And the 
tons of answers pop up, genuinely good ones, but some quick ones. Amazon wish list. You can go on Amazon, find wish list, and there's actually stock a refugee's home option, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're a landlord, a business owner, rent or hire refugees if you can. Airbnb property, open homes initiative, rescue.org, nationality service center. They can help you find specific Catholic charities. is fantastic. Tons of them. Watch for scams. Make sure they're 501c3 before donating. Um, and it's great that so many have made it here, but the majority of Afghans who work for the U.S., Uh, were most likely left behind in the rushed evacuation from Afghanistan, according to a senior State Department official. No word for what's ahead, but they're saying, don't worry, there's a diplomatic sequel coming, whatever that means. Um, Finally, where does it stand now? Uh, The Taliban, excuse me, it sounds like I just swallowed a helium balloon, the Taliban, uh, seeking to cement control of a nation shattered by two decades of war. Because it seems like everybody's like, oh, they won, they won. Well, they've just inherited a country that is in shambles. Um, It's been dependent on foreign aid and opium sales. They no longer have that foreign aid. And in a digital age where everybody has their mobile phones and cameras out, and we're already seeing it, reports, it goes right to Twitter. We see exactly Mm -hmm. what's happening in real time. And that could further isolate Afghanistan, destabilizing that Taliban government, creating room for ISIS. All that there's so many different tribes. There's um, Panjir Valley. There's... So and lots all, of battles going on there. Like we it's yeah. almost assumed here in America that that's going the Taliban is going to be the ruling party there, but they're not giving up without a fight. I've seen a ton of videos going around of uh, different groups trying to battle ISIS, taking down their flags and regaining some control. So hopefully the good guys there actually are the ones that end up winning. We have also seen a ton of reports going on and it was disheartening. I'll admit a lot of it ended up being doctored or told incorrectly, like one of those stories we actually mentioned here last week where the helicopter took off and it looked like it was hanging a man uh, Mm -hmm. as he was going on. That wasn't the case. It was actually an Afghan pilot and the guy had a flag and he was on a harness and all kinds of stuff. So it wasn't accurate. That's something that I want to remind the listeners when you're seeing all of this video, remember how strong propaganda is because there's going to be videos that come out from the Taliban that are like, look at all this good we're doing. We're, We're helping, we're feeding, we're doing all this stuff. Don't believe everything you see just like you normally do here in the United States. That's a good reminder there. Another concern was what are we going to do with all this money and all these weapons that has happened? And Kate went through some of those things um, like the Blackhawks. Obviously, nobody wants them to have that. The helicopters, 208 aircraft, 75,000 war vehicles. Well, everybody that's in the military, by and large, knows that those whether those be MRAPs or seven tons or whatever, they constantly are breaking down. And it really could be by design that they're doing that. I don't want to give Lockheed Martin and all those fucking groups that much credit, but (laughs) we don't know about a lot. None of us were mechanics. None of us were operators in that way. None of us flew and none of us were on the air side. So in order to give you accurate information, I actually went out and found a rescue pilot. So he could come in and intelligently talk about what are some of the things these helicopters would actually need to remain operational, because that's been a big concern. So here he is. It's an attack fighter pilot. Let's go. Hell yeah. All right, now I'm Daryl Block 30. I'm privileged to have a helicopter pilot. Lots of the news going on in Afghanistan is what's going on with these helicopters. We've seen the news clips. We've seen that. So I wanted to bring in the actual one because if you've been listening to this show, you know, we don't know shit about aviation. We've got to be honest with you. So we have Michael Tassi on the show. He is an Air Force pilot, flies multiple types of helicopters. His videos have amassed tons of views on YouTube and Instagram. He has a bunch of followers just for zipping around all kinds of different flight lines. Michael, thank you for joining the show. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the uh, intro. And, and if you know anything about pilots, we're always happy to talk about uh, flying in helicopters. So. Yeah. And usually when we have pilots on, I like to ask them to just teach me how they stay in the air. But helicopters actually make more sense to me than like the regular planes. I'll never, ever understand the physics of how a regular plane flies. But a helicopter makes more sense to me. Like it's more natural, I think. I will be a little bit honest. It, it flies more naturally. Like it flies more like a bird does. You kind of decelerate. But I will be honest. There's some serious voodoo magic that goes on with the aerodynamics. Even as a pilot myself, I like to <clears throat> keep a little bit of gray area in terms of how exactly they work. I think if you know all of the physics, it may actually make you a little bit more scared than a little bit of day to day. Yeah, we, I remember the ZBT crew, we were going somewhere and we sat down with some United pilots. And we were like, so how does this plane stay in the air? And they're all like, honestly, 
I know like the scientific answer. I don't really know. Like, I don't really understand how it works either, but I want to get into your actual career because you're a rescue pilot. So talk about that um, a, a little bit and what you like day to day, you're out, you're, you're on call. What is a day to day type of thing that you could expect to see while you're out? Yeah, so I, I actually have sort of two careers, if you like. Um, I started in the Air Force, uh, the HH-60 Pavehawk, which is, of course, a combat search and rescue helicopter. Um, we do CSAR, so combat search and rescue, and then we also do CASVAC or MEDEVAC, uh, which has been a bit more common for the past 20 years. Um, so interspersed with that, I've also been in the Guard, so uh, I've had other careers. I ran a small helicopter tour and charter company uh, for a few years. Um, so that the rest of that to my partner went back to the military for a bit and now i fly for boston med flight as a uh, h-145 medevac pilot so i do pretty much the same thing uh, or two very similar jobs both the military and the civilian world and being on a helicopter and being the pilot this is a question that i have because we have seen a lot of the afghan pilots that are staying and maybe defecting over to the taliban as a pilot we obviously know that you learn how to fly. You learn how to do all the things that you're going to need to do to fly. Seems pretty important when you're a pilot. But what about the maintenance side of the helicopter? As a pilot of a helicopter, are you required to know essentially everything that goes on maintenance-wise as well? Uh, so there's a pretty big divide um, there between maintainers and pilots. I will never profess to know or be able to do even 2% of what our maintenance guys do. We have a base sort of technical level of knowledge of what is going on because you need to understand that to mm -hmm. fly the helicopter but any ability to repair it um it is quite a bit over our head uh, about the extent of my maintenance knowledge is i walk around the helicopter make sure all the panels are sort of clicked on there's no fluids that look like you're like the uh, old data to old used cars oh i like just kicking the tires and things yeah, like pretty that much. I, I mean we we always joke on the pre-flight you walk around like okay there's still four blades in the helicopter mm -hmm. we're on the tail rotor we're good to go so uh, that is about the extent of our knowledge as pilots i i say that there's some maintenance test pilots who probably know quite a bit more um than myself but for most of your operational line pilots there's not a, a very extensive knowledge of aviation or, or, uh, so, so you're probably like the average person who like you drive a car every day like for me i drive a car every day if i need to change the oil i can do that if i need to change yeah. a filter i could do that a tire i could do that you start talking about alternators and checking out like the computer system and things like that no shot i need to go to an actual mechanic yeah and in fairness for us is on the aviation side i can't even do that i'm not allowed to i mean don't get me wrong I, i'm sure i could figure it out in a pinch but there's no need we have flight engineers for our air crew who they that is their specialty and they are all extremely good at it and I've read a lot about helicopters being really a depreciating asset right away, like that they are constantly in the maintenance mode. What do you think the odds are? Let's say they did, which we know that they didn't, but let's say that they did leave a pristine helicopter. How long in flight time would that helicopter remain pristine where it was able just to continuously go out? That's, so that's a great question. So you know, for all the folks concerned about, hey, these helicopters are going to be flown, employed against, you know, innocent civilians, enemies of the Taliban. Um, there was a pretty big debate when we even gave them helicopters to start with. We initially gave them Russian helicopters, so MI-8s, MI-17s, um, because they were almost simple enough to be maintained, um, you know, and just to what be what's you know, pretty blunt, a third world country. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when we sanctioned Russia after, I believe it was the Crimea invasion, we didn't want taxpayer dollars going directly to the Russians to buy brand new Russian helicopters to then sell to the Afghans. So it's kind of like a lose, lose, lose. So what we did is we started to buy Blackhawks. The problem is the Blackhawk is far more maintenance intensive. Um, it's a fabulous helicopter. It's probably the best helicopter ever built bar none, the UH-60 airframe. I have no problem saying that and defending that. But you have to have a first world maintenance structure and system. I mean, you're talking in the first 10 hours, that helicopter, even if it's left in perfect condition, is going to start to need inspections. You know, there's a 15 hour inspection. And yeah, it may get- And that's, through... that's flight time, 10 hours of flight time. And that's yeah. nothing. I mean, that's, yeah. not, that's not a whole lot. 
Yeah, you hit your first official inspection. I believe it's again our maintainers know a lot more, so they'll they'll make fun of me when they watch this. But oh, I can't wait for that. <laughs> around yeah, first inspection is around fifteen hours or so, and that's assuming nothing breaks before then. You know, there there is a decent chance that you have some sort of malfunction even before that time um, that you would need maintenance to fix, and particularly how many times you shut it. Sorry, shut it down, start mm -hmm. it back up. Each time you incur more and more risk of something breaking. So even a perfect helicopter, absolutely pristine, fresh on all its inspections, I, I would suspect you'd never get more than about 20, maybe 50 hours out of it before something substantial breaks that you're that's, going to do. I mean, that's honest to God insane. With how much money you spend on those things, yep. 15, 20 hours that you got to put them in. And I was talking to uh, Jack McCain on Twitter about it. And he got into a discussion with some other helicopter pilots. And it was, I just sat back and kind of watched the conversation unfold about parts because it's not like you can go on Amazon and order an, a part for a Black Hawk. Like you can't do it. And a lot of them are proprietary. And he mentioned like parts like honeycomb and things like that. So if there was a part that broke for them in Afghanistan, how would they go about getting the part? Would that, that's also impossible, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's difficult enough to start with, even when the United States is not actively embargoing your ability or, or um, precluding you from getting those parts. Even if you were to just sort of be a friendly actor that wasn't hostile to the United States, it's difficult to get those parts, that supply chain just around the world. I mean, it, it is a very robust infrastructure required to operate a UH-60. Especially right now with COVID, you can't even buy parts for a John Deere lawnmower, much yeah, less a Blackhawk. <laughs> yeah, we all we all are, are familiar with you know supply shortages right late. so no absolutely just getting the parts and even stuff that you don't even think of beyond the parts just the oils for the gearboxes these are super special oils to run in you know extremely high temperature gearboxes and you can be assured that there is no oil left in any of those gearboxes um shouldn't say that too loudly that's I, you know yeah the videos are already out so i think a lot of those cats are out of the bag and yeah. it was kind of refreshing like the the news stories that were coming out from MSN, I saw one on MSN where it was talking about the Taliban is disappointed that they have non-functioning helicopters. Well, no shit. Like, because if you are, even if you're not an aviation person, you're a ground person and your seven ton vehicle goes down before you leave that seven ton and you go back to whatever fob you're from base from, you make sure that everything sensitive is out of there and it doesn't operate anymore. There's no shot you're leaving Blackhawks and shit on the ground and they are able to still do hellfire gun runs. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, and, and in fairness, the UH-60 itself is not particularly classified. The, I mean, we sold 20 to the Chinese in the 80s. Like China has mm. perfectly functional UH-60 Blackhawks all around the world. There's civilian operators flying the Blackhawks. So it's a pretty ubiquitous helicopter. Obviously, as you start to employ it tactically, mm -hmm. um, there become sensitive bits on it, but um, I, those helicopters are about as unsensitive as you could possibly get. Uh, so it's, you know, there's no real risk of something super sensitive falling into their hands. Um, you know, it, it's mainly just use of the helicopter, which can very, very easily be um, precluded. <laughs> That's great news. I think that is going to really help people understand what's going on because it is it is scary you know like you look at a, a country that you've fought in for 20 years and you leave in all that type of military equipment and i believe for guys like me and women that are on the ground too you you know that you the advantage that you have by having air and they don't have it that's a big deal yeah and i will say i mean it's very sad though it, i mean that needs to be as maybe it's just me you know there's a lot of human tragedy going on that something mm -hmm. like that you know is minor but still as, as a helicopter air command someone who loves helicopters and knows the lives you can save that you know a black hawk helicopter whether it be configured for medevac firefighting like there is a lot of utility to that and to see over 30 of those just go to complete waste you know, those could be put to use domestically um, mm -hmm. in a heartbeat. I actually joked with a couple of my friends about, you know, a week before Kabul fell. I was like, okay, who's got a couple million dollars in bribe money and an Antonov? Because let's go get, you know, because you could bring those back and, you know, put them to use for domestically now. A lot of civilian operators use them for firefighting in the wildfires. And so it is still, well, you know. Cities who might need them to do things like you do. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's, so it's very sad to see. I will say that again, I don't wake up in the morning and go, oh no, the Taliban has Blackhawks. I, I actually find it mild, like mildly comical because even if we left them 30 of them with perfect maintenance, you know, all the parts they need, they still won't keep them running. They, there's just not the expertise there, but it is still very sad that, that they have been left there. Yeah, I imagine so. Because if you could, if like for me, it'd be like gear drift is a gift. Well, if you're going to let them have it, just let me have it. I'll keep it. I'll have my own yeah. personal one at my house. If you, if you let me. Yeah. And it, it's, I mean, the other, the other one that is a bit sad, I, I'm sure you saw all the videos of Chinooks left there. So they, they weren't actually Chinooks. They're CH 46 frog, which is of course the Marines twin rotor, but it's really sad because I, I don't know if you saw that, but one of the ones that did a lot of the embassy evacuations, um, someone traced the tail number back to Saigon. So that same helicopter that got left there, did the evacuations in Saigon. Again, I, I have to have someone fact check this, but it seemed as if someone did some pretty good due diligence, actually evacuated the embassy in Saigon and then evacuated it in Kabul and then was left there. And that's, it's kind of sad to see a piece of Yeah, history. we at least need to get that one, put that one in the Smithsonian. It's a pretty important yeah. helicopter. Absolutely. Damn. All right, Michael, thanks so much for clearing that up for us. We appreciate it. Stay safe out there when you're helping people stay alive. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks for having me and uh, glad to chat. Honestly, God, it made me feel a lot better. Yeah. I felt better. Yeah. 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 I mean, it definitely, listen, don't get me wrong. The fact that there was no plan, no plan, no plan to remove all of that equipment and bring it home with us is disheartening. I understand the logistical nightmare involved in transporting that much equipment, but to know that ultimately it's going to break down because they won't know how to properly maintain it and will not have that sort of access to those weapons and those uh aircraft is makes me feel a little bit better for sure oh a lot better F yeah. they only can fly 15 minutes or 15 hours without any type of major mechanic stuff going on that's, that's nothing. Like nothing that's, that's nothing. nothing the only yeah. thing all negative kate can think is them selling this to countries that do know how to maintain and use them well when that. you because kate and cons haven't had the opportunity to listen to the interview they'll she'll know that that is a foolish comment now so yeah, in your face, Kate. I but only also, was saying that so that yeah, so that I could, you can chaps, I point. would like you uh, <laughs> before we go into one other segment. But I would like you. You said this on our Instagram story already, and you explained it, and you actually got ahead of this story, and you put your old dog training hat on and explained everybody what you thought might have been happening with that picture that was circulating about the dogs in the crates, yeah, and can... came to be that you were absolutely on the nose. So could you just if for anybody who didn't hear that explanation for those pictures, could you just explain that now, please? Kate, did you have something to say or no? Well, context, Katie, mm -hmm. the, the super viral images of what seemed to be military working dogs. Left that them. everyone in the country and saw. Everyone in the country said, and the captions were, the military left all their dogs behind to die, blah, blah, blah. And people were furious because people, and it was a lot of people who didn't comment a single thing about the Afghan people, but God forbid there's an animal involved and then they suddenly care. Um, but anyway, yes, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. So you have all these dogs that they came on. The initial report said 51 military working dogs are left in Afghanistan. And immediately when those types of things start happening and that report comes out, my ears pop up big time. And I become very alert because that's something that's very near to my heart is the military working dog community. And I was legitimately surprised at first. I was like, well, my phone hasn't rang once. And surely all the different dog handlers that I know, one of them would have contacted me like, hey, dude, this is fucked up. People need to know about this. That didn't happen once. So I just kind of explained to everybody that, one, things aren't always as they seem. The military, the active duty military is never going to leave a military working dog behind. That couldn't be more summarized better than a, a helicopter pilot that I actually talked to on Twitter as well. He always said that whenever he was picking up a group of Marines, if they had 22 human Marines and two dogs, he would report back 24 Marines is how he would come back and do that. The military, when you're with the dog team, that dog team, it counts as a person. When I was in my... Uh, pack whenever i was going around and with recon they would have if we normally had five they would count six in there because that was there now the military as a whole that's what individuals do the military as a whole views dogs as supply so they view them as the same thing as a blanket or rounds or guns or anything like that it's a piece of equipment so they do have that part of it so it could it was feasible Maybe. And I, but I, I knew it wasn't true because I would have heard about it. Well, it ended up being 
not what I had uh, suspected to be completely honest. I thought it may, might've been a and a dogs. Cause I did see them. They were German shepherds and there were some that were German shepherds and some that were others. Turns out they were mostly from the embassy. They were embassy staff, state department staff, and like uh Bob dogs essentially that have been around forever, all the different department of state, all the different military working dog handlers. They all brought their dogs back. They all had the pictures of it. We even saw one a week before where there is a dog sitting in a seat with his little ears up just hanging out chilling in business class it looked like they're just chilling so i think that it went well i know now that people went way overboard with it and the shitty part about it it's going to be essentially like that starbucks story that we yep. used to yeah. tell all the time it won't matter that that's not what happened those headlines are out there forever those tweets are out there forever. Those images are out there forever. And that's just the way it's going to be. You can't put the right. toothpaste back in the tube. The same exact thing with the, with Joe Biden. There is plenty of stuff to, to criticize the president about. Plenty of stuff to criticize the um, State Department and S Secretary Blinken. But to criticize like Joe Biden for looking at his watch after all of the vans had left and the procession was done and to make it look like he did it in the actual funeral was bullshit. Like, why would you do like that to me is just dirty, dirty politics to make the president of the United States look like he he was checking his watch. When I'm asking a question. Though, but his hand his hand was still over his heart, though. No, when he when he did it, he went and he like they went and saw him because they the procession was all the way out, man. Like if you look at it from was when it? it happened, the full video one, when it was initially aired on Fox News, it was slowed down a ton. Like, and mm -hmm. he just, he just like glanced at it. And someone actually pointed out that it could have been a rosary or it could just be habit. I mean, how many times have you been someplace that's important and you just look at your watch or you look at your phone to see what time it is just out yeah. of habit? Like, yeah. it's just picking out. There's a lot of shit you could say about Joe Biden. I, he cares about the troops. Like everything that I've ever seen in his life, I think that he legitimately does care. And I would say thing, same thing about President Trump if people were saying he doesn't give a fuck about the troops. Sure you do. Like if you have to notify parents, you care. Like that's something that you care about. And to say that he doesn't care, he's so callous. There's a lot of things wrong with Biden, but him being not sensitive and not being emotional, not one. I do think, though, he would probably like to take that back if he could. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah he would want to do that because you can't but you can't do any everything. Right. You know, like mm -hmm. there's going to be that that happens. And but that's also the the hat you wear when you're president of the United States and this social media age. You better be fucking perfect, because if you're not, you're going to get roasted because you were going to get roasted anyway. And now there's just a little bit more cannon fodder. Yep. And speaking of dogs, we went to our Instagram story and asked some doggy bag questions, bringing back the doggy bag segment because we haven't done it in a while. So chaps, are you ready? I am ready. And this segment is going to be brought to you by our good friends at Roman. Roman.com slash Barstool to talk about U.S. licensed healthcare professionals with Roman. Roman ready equals confidence and confidence that you know you can rise to the occasion like a spider in Ireland. We're, <laughs> we're looking back at the summer of love and Roman wants to make sure you can participate in your own way, whether that's being a single person and a couple around who would rather stay with each other just in bed, just goofing there, or a US, U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships you for free with two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool and complete an online visit. Take your ED without leaving your home. Complete an online visit today and connect with a great professional. GetRoman.com com slash barstool today if you're prescribed you get 50 percent off your first month of ed treatment and make sure you have the confidence and control this summer roman ready all right let's do a little dog get bag. get roman and get your partner then get your partner wetter than my street was yesterday there you go yeah. hell yeah yeah mm -hmm. so to those people who <laughs> asked about dogs barking or nipping We've at answered those, or we've answered those. Chaps has answered those. Uh, so if you are new to the show, I'm just going to have to direct you to episode one. Start there and listen to the almost 400 episodes. And isn't it weird that it was the, the handle that kept asking that was at totally not Biden? Yeah. Not the dog <laughs> biting? That was weird. Yeah, that was Major Biden just uh, fucking it up uh, still. All right, chaps. Does the diet change for dogs while deployed? Because obviously we eat differently when we're deployed. Does that hold true for dogs as well? Um, well, the, the answer technically is no. If you're part of the vet community, the army vet corps, 
you're uh, I don't know if I've said that the only vets in the entire military are in the army. The army is the only one that has vets. There's no Navy docs or anything like that. So the army vet corps is the one that dictates how much the dogs are fed because they're responsible for that. They tell the handlers how much they're going to be fed to like within a quarter of a cup of food. And it's all the same food. They would say no, that you're supposed to feed the dog twice a day. And there was actually a viral clip that went around. I forget who it was. Oh, it was uh, John Taffer that was talking about military working dogs don't eat. So they'll be hungry to find their food when they're searching. Ridiculous. Mm. It, that's just not true. They, they, they're fed at six o'clock in the morning and then five, three o'clock in the afternoon every single day. When I was deployed and I, I would encourage my handlers, especially if they're out on missions to only feed their dog once a day and give them not a double feeding, but like 50% more so that they could have that time. And the reason for that is if you are a working dog handler and your dog is out and they're doing all kinds of stuff and they had just eaten, you increase their, their um, percentage of getting bloat exponentially where and blood is where their stomach can turn and if you are out and about on a mission and the vet is let's say you're in Fallujah there's only a couple of vets that are going to be in the area you might have to be life flighted by helicopter for your dog all the way to Baghdad in order to get to a vet so I would tell my handlers only feed your dog once a day so you only have that bloat risk once instead of twice Interesting. And I also didn't know the thing about the vets only being in the army and not the other mm -hmm. branches. And the vet techs too the vet techs are only army too. Interesting. Do dogs get PTS? Oh, I definitely, for sure. And they, you can, you could see that in dogs that come back from deployment that are um, been around explosions, very specifically explosions. They will be very averse to it. And I would say they, it's more difficult for the dogs to recover. You almost don't see it where they recover because we have cognitive ability to process what's going on because we can, we understand it. They don't know what that was. So they think even if they're back in Okinawa or they're back in Cherry Point, North Carolina, that same shit could be here. Like they don't, you can't be like, Hey dude, right. look, we're going to war right now for six months and we're going to be back. Like they just don't know when it's going to pop up again. So you could see they're, they're really spooked, but we do do training along the way to do -do. decrease <laughs> that, do, 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 to decrease that too. So mm. like exposure therapy and things like that. Cool. Can you adopt dogs who fail out of military dog working school? You actually can. And you go, if you guys, if you want to do that, go to the 331st uh, squadron here at Lackland Air Force Base. There is a link for adoption. Some of them won't even be dogs that were in school that long. And a lot of people think military working dog, oh, that's going to be mean. The, they Dogs fail out because they're too nice. Like they don't want to attack. They don't want to do any of that stuff. And they will fail out because they just don't want to work. They're just low drive and they don't have any desire to do it. And they aren't going to do it for long periods of time. So they don't make it through the program either. And if the dog is really aggressive, you're not going to get them because we're not adopting them out. It's against the law. Plus the dropout dogs are the coolest ones. Like, yeah, bro, cool what's guys. good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Smoking a little weed. <laughs> you got a doink to share, mm -hmm. man. A fat mm -hmm. doink. Yo. All right. They're all Eagles fans too. <laughs> we got birds. a new puppy. And our older dog has become depressed as a result. What should we do? I'll get over it. Like they usually, <laughs> that's, that's normal. That's a very normal thing. It's like a only child that brings in a baby. They're going to just pout for a little while. Eventually this is the best. This is actually the reason why this is great. This is the reason why I got baby Dale woohoo because Gus is nine and baby Dale, obviously very spry. If you introduce a young puppy or a young dog with an older dog, it can actually lift their spirits and keep them alive for longer. Interesting. Can I get be, my they'll be happy boys. I'm not a dog professional, but I would also recommend taking the older dog for plastic surgery, tightening mm. up the face a little bit, you mm -hmm. know, tightening up the paunches, maybe getting mm. rid of a couple nipples. Uh, and that way they're feeling a little tighter, a little smoother, a little younger. Artie was very concerned one day about Gus's nipples. Um, it's when you're a kid, that's you're like, what the fuck are these, man? What is yeah. This? And like, like, what are all these things, dad? And I was like, those are nipples. And McCartney goes the top two, but what are the other ones? And I was like, oh no, dogs can have like eight, oh, 16 nipples. It really just depends. Mm. And they were like, what, what <laughs> more I nipples than one. two. This is our, and shout out to my uh, friend's son, best nickname for nipples you've ever heard in your life. You guys need to buckle up. Any guesses before we get going? Uh, nubbins. Mm. Doink, doinkers. Doinkers. No, he calls nipples power bumpers is what he calls them 
like that. <laughs> okay. I always thought when your nipples are hard through your shirt, I always like somebody say, oh, smuggling peas over there, are you? Mm, is everybody it? else? Yeah, everybody, baby toes. Everybody <laughs> else is, uh, <laughs> everybody else in his family has two nipples, right? Like it's just little, well, I guess she has two nipples too, but it's like a younger sister and then dad. And he goes in the little boy, he's like five now, four. And when he goes in, he's like, mom, you got big power bumpers. Oh, <laughs> that's great. That's so innocent. All right, uh, we, got, we got two more here. Uh, this is for all the new parents and new dog owners out there. Can you train a toddler the same way you train a dog? Uh, my old answer when I was in the Marine Corps would have been absolutely that the training concepts are exactly the same. But And it's not something that you want to say out loud because people get super offended. But in reality, the training is nearly the same because every mammal is trained the exact same way where you have, um, where you can either do compulsion, which would be physical, which I don't agree with, obviously, like I'm not doing that with my kids, or you can do inducive training where it's more, you're giving positive reinforcement and the negative consequences is you are denied that positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can, that's the way you do it. There's a lot of the same thing. However, potty I've training, been teaching dude, my son to sniff bombs already. Yeah, that's, that's great for him to do yeah. that. But I would not recommend, uh, sometimes I would recommend putting a dog's face in their shit would not recommend that for a toddler. All right. That's also good. I was going to say, Kate, does your, does Cash, did he just lift his ankles to his, his ears and sniff his diaper? I mean, he can put his whole foot in his mouth, but, wow. He's but you do cons, you use the same exact, uh, training standards that you would for dogs with football teams, like where you, it's successive approximation where you're doing mm -hmm. baby steps. You don't just come in day one and be like, okay, we're going to do cover three umbrella like that. You don't do that. Like you go in and you learn the basics and then you get more advanced as you go on. Everybody uses the same training principles, whether they really know it or not. It's just how do you manipulate those? Right, right. All right. Last one. Once reliably housebroken, our dog has reverted back to pooping and peeping inside. What gives and how can we fix it? It needs to immediately go to the vet. Like if you have a dog that is potty trained and reverses back, typically it could be a liver or a kidney problem, or it can be something that you're missing. It could be like an infected tooth. I would get blood work done immediately because typically it's, that's not going to be just behavioral. It's going to be something uh, health related. All right. Well, there you have it. Another successful doggy bag wrapped up. Mm -hmm. All right. And what do we have next? Is that it? Is that the last? No, oh, no. Oh, no, we no. have Mark Wayne. Mark Wayne. Mark Wayne. We have old Mark Wayne Mullen for round number five. Mark the Wayne Mullen. Can you smell it a little what this congressman is cooking? It's a. <laughs> And I need to say, Mark Wayne's name is M A R K W A Y N E with no space. All no just space. one word. All one word. No, it almost sounds like Mark Wayne. Imagine being friends with him and trying to text him Mark Wayne, and it just yeah. like constantly, automatically, it will auto correct to like Mark Twain. And the <laughs> worst is, you see this represented Republican, Democrat, whatever. You see this name, and you pretty much know what area of the country. I'm like, this is a. This is a Southern Midwesty kind of name, <laughs> my old Mark Wayne Mullen. Anyways, he threatened U.S. Embassy staff in Tajikistan. He's an Oklahoma representative. Uh, he threatened U.S. Embassy staff in Tajikistan, outraged that they would not assist him in carrying a huge amount of money through the country as he attempted to travel to Afghanistan for an unauthorized evacuation effort, the Washington Post reported this week. Mullen called the U.S. Embassy in Tajikistan on Monday saying, hey, I'm going to be flying uh, from the country of Georgia to Tajikistan's capital within hours. Need a little help transporting a huge sum of cash to which they said, excuse me, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> what? What the fuck? Uh, anyway, the Oklahoma congressman told the embassy that he planned to rescue five U.S. citizens, a woman and her four children from Afghanistan by hiring a helicopter, hopefully not from the Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> uh, embassy officials denied Mullen's request, saying that sounds batshit fucking crazy, dude. Uh, good intentions, though. Anyways, they said they could not help him bypass Tajikistan's current res restrictions on his way to Afghanistan. Upset by the response he received, he then threatened the top diplomat, Ambassador John Mark, not Mark Wayne, just Mark on its own. Palmersham. Uh, Judge Palmersham and embassy staff. 
As of late Tuesday, U.S. officials told the Post they were unsure of his whereabouts. Not fun to get threatened by a congressman and then he goes dark on you. You know, right. you never know where you're gonna. Um, Mullen has been and is currently completely safe, said his exhausted uh, spokeswoman. I'm adding words here. Meredith Blanford, <laughs> in a statement sent out Tuesday night, without elaborating his location. Then there he is. He appeared. Mullen posted on his Instagram early Wednesday morning that he's not missing, but he did go dark for a little. Yes, because it wasn't safe to be communicating. Um, in my mind, he was like in a in a coffee shop somewhere kind of. Oh, no, out. I think this guy <laughs> is like because his bio veteran MMA fighter, all these things. This dude is a guy that wants to get into it. But I think that this is like some of the other story. Good initiative, bad judgment. Yes. Because if if it if it goes well, great. And there's going to be people that will line up for the remainder of your natural life to suck that dick until cum comes out. That's just the way it goes down. But what happens if a sitting congressman is taken by the Taliban? That's like, so a he, total international incident. He's not a veteran, by the way. So he's not? Weird, no, he's not. That's a oh, weird thing. To well, that's very different. Then that's even more. That's even more insane. That's uh, it's even more insane. Um, anyways, he said, uh, have we been helping get Americans out of Ka- Afghanistan? Yes. Is the mission continuing? Yes. He wrote uh, Blanford said Mullen and his congressional office will continue to do anything in our power to bring home all Americans from the war zone that President Joe Biden abandoned. The safety and security of the American people will always be his top priority. Now, I agree. I think could have done a lot more to get a lot more people out. It should not have gone down this way, blah, 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 whatever. But I think we can also all agree, probably not the best way to go about it. No, <laughs> like, because story we've heard stories about this, too. And we've obviously talked a lot about like the digital Dunkirk and things like that. Yeah. I've also heard from a lot of people on the ground that these private groups were a huge distraction. Oh, that yeah. even, even though they did go in, like having to deal with that, the Marines having to stop what they're doing and and go out and do the Marines army say, you know what I mean? They, (laughs) the whole squad, like they were there and they had to stop because these people go and you just, I think it's almost like a delusions of grandeur type of situation where you, you start drinking your own Kool-Aid too much. People tell you how badass you are and things like that. And you're like, Oh hell yeah, I am badass. I don't, I don't need, I'm going to go do this as a lone ranger. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's dangerous and it's a distraction and it really could have, we are very, very fortunate that some of these things didn't end up insanely bad, yeah, insanely I, bad. I, I think you need case, to take a step, a step back and just uh, uh, assess the situation. And if any little part of it says, well, I'm kind of doing this so I can say I did this, then it's not something worth continuing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, this whole thing was planned out from the beginning to get a bunch of clout, to get a bunch of whatever. 100%. It was a whole, oh, no doubt. Off- I think it was a giant, obviously a giant dog and pony show. Um, and it's one of those things, like when I was watching those cars drive into the water last night, even though they saw all the other cars that were stuck and I'm like, you assholes, now someone's going to have to come rescue your asses Yes, and you Mm -hmm. knew better. And that's the same with this case. Anybody who's going out of the way to go now, real troops are going to have to go get your ass out. If you get into trouble, like all that. And they're saying we did take the, we have it in a sheet here too. And we cut it from last week because it wasn't obviously important considering what was going on. But I do want to mention that two other congressmen did that as well. And Seth Moulton, who's been on this show several times and Peter Meyer, who um, hasn't been on the show, but he's an army veteran. And they went on and they said that we were uniquely situated to be able to identify what the actual threat on the ground is and get firsthand information. It's uh, to me, you could say whatever you want. You can give 80,000 speeches that are an hour long about the reasons why you did it. You did it for the photo ops and you could you did it so you could say I was on the ground whenever it was happening. And this was what I saw. That's the only reason you do it. You're still putting other troops at risk when you do that, too. That's just and they have to protect you. And it's like right. And both of these guys were officers. Moulton was a captain that was in charge and like a platoon commander. He knows good and damn well when you go there. It doesn't matter if you're showing up or not the Marines will not let you just walk around without security. Like you're going to have security Marines that could have been doing something else were transitioned in order to do some type of security. And they said that we didn't take a seat away. How did you not take a seat away? Did you Mm -hmm. fucking walk back? You came back. So you Mm -hmm. took a seat. Like what you didn't stand all the way from Afghanistan to fucking home. You didn't do that. Right now. However, in Mullen's defense, not a veteran, but according to his Wikipedia page, He's a politician, businessman, and former professional mixed martial arts fighter. Okay. He also has an associate's degree in construction technology from Oklahoma State University. So there's that. He's got, listen, could have figured it out. 
just because you wear a lot of affliction t-shirts and listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. I think he was a you... pro MMA fighter. Was yes, he? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so well, watch what you say, Cons. Mm, no, I was about to get around. fucking <laughs> I get don't care. put in a Peruvian necktie. No. No, I don't care. <laughs> as long like, as it's pastel, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> I don't think I don't think uh, Nick knew what a Peruvian necktie was. It's an actual move in jujitsu, Nick. Hmm. I saw mm-hmm. you scoffing. <laughs> let's uh, guy. let's move into a little bit of save round now. But I didn't even know he was safe. Oh man, what a dramatic Instagram picture! I just scrolled down and saw it for the first time. First line is it looks like me when I first wake up. You know, you wake up and you're you could have had your phone and you accidentally hit the camera button and whenever you go in and you're like, oh good God Almighty, what is wrong with my face? That's his face right also, now. Also, like, this guy, like you said, chaps, like you thought he was a veteran. The green military t-shirt, the vet beard, the that's why. Yeah, he's really, really he's not explicitly saying he's a veteran, but he kind of isn't yeah. correcting you either. Well, and it's a it's a fair assumption when you went to combat. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Yeah. You would think that'd be your first time, just like dropping in, be like, What's up, fellas? Hey, I want to see what this combat thing was all Sup, about. Fellas? Uh, <laughs> all right. Shut up, Ben Mintz. Uh-huh. Let's move into <laughs> a little bit of save rounds and alibis which today is going to be presented by our good friends at Rocky Boots. If you need new boots, it's the first of the month, folks, when we're recording. So you have money in that old bank account. Make sure you get some squared away boots from RockyBoots.com. And the promo code ZBT at 25% off your next pair. Also, Rocky Boots is going to be sponsoring a new series of a uh, long time tool as soon Starting yeah. back up. Film yeah. it. I'm, I'm going to film some of it as soon as I'm done here today. I'm excited about that. Going to be sending over to Nick. Nick's going to produce those too. I haven't told him that. There you go, Nick. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Um, we have Rocky Boots is designed and built in the U.S. for each individual branch of the military, most recently side by side with the Marine Corps. And not only the best boots, but they also have other shoes too. If you want just regular cowboy boots or turd kickers, as they call them here in old Texas, you can get those. If you want duck boots, Boots. It's about to be hunting season. You can get some of those. If you want some waders and you're going to go out to the swamps, they're water moccasin proof, my friends. I don't know if I can actually say that, but uh, I would imagine they're water moccasin proof. Yeah. <laughs> so you can go ahead wear those. They also have just hiking boots and all kinds of things, any kind of boot that you could possibly need, comfortable clothes, comfortable jackets. And it's about to be jacket season too. It's going to sneak yep. up on us. These jackets are so warm. We wore them last year at the Army Navy game or two years ago, the Army Navy game. Absolutely loved it. If you need a thick, hardy boy, then that's where I would go too. Can yes, I Kate. say something? 20, can I 23 year old Kate it for a second? Mm. Football season. Give me, I've said this before, a real d- down in the, the link parking lot. Oh, uh, yeah. Tailgate and an Eagles game. 23 year old Kate, put Rocky boots some jeans that are a little bit rolled up a guy in an Eagles Jersey with boots, get some, get some Rocky boots for tailgate season. My friends stomp those beer cans. You're walking through the muck of the link. You're doing it all. I'm saying Rocky boots may not like it, but that's the most the, Delco thing that you've said on the so podcast. I believe. The, 23 year old Kate. I'm telling you, if you're like, okay, I had that that another is- story that I wanted to tell a 23 year old Kate. There was a group of fishermen who rescued a, a pack of kittens mm. And then they they held them for four days in a ship. Like the kittens were just floating about. How they got out there, we'll never know. But the four fishermen picked them up, cared for them, and they're all bearded looking like big rough and tumble tuna fish catchers. You walk into the sea pub holding a kitten, 23-year-old Kate is going to be smitten. Mm-hmm. I mean... One of my she buddies, the Rocky boots part, but nothing else. Put a kitten in your Rocky boot. Oh my God. Forget it. <laughs> One of my buddies had a picture of him and uh, I believe it was Afghanistan and he has his rifle slung on his arm and he has a little kitten in his hand and he's giving it a kiss and he used to use it on his dating profiles. Oh, oh that's a winner. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smart move. Mm-hmm. Smart move. Indeed. All right. Let's do a little save rounds and alibis. Nick, we will start with you. Sure, save round. Long time toolies is coming back, and I will be editing it. They got paid. <laughs> made aware of. Um, speaking of long time toolies, I was inspired by a Chaps' his last video uh, with the the lawn, and mm. I actually invested in a sprinkler system because I was embarrassed oh, wow. by how my lawn looked. And then we got hit with the hurricane, and now I really didn't need those for the foreseeable like week or so. So, <laughs> got to turn them off. Uh, I'll be God, turning off sucks. my sprinklers for about a. Uh, about a week and a half, I think. 
I'm you and Nona it. just sitting out there, your arms crossed, in the green grass. <laughs> she's she's out there with a hair dryer, and I'm yeah. saying I want yeah. this whole one. That's part of Firewatch. By, yeah. yeah by end, At least end, the, end of day. the two of you can make sure no one walks on the grass. That's a key thing mm. to industry. And to the listener, we all have, we talked about Nona having Firewatch big time news, and I, I would say news a Friday news dump almost. Nick let us know that two Nonas are at his house every day, not just yes. once. Two, two, Nonas. two Nonas on um, that, that are on a watch. You know, they watch my daughter during the day, both of them tag team. And then no new who is uh, the grandfather comes by around two o'clock and, and, and does his little hour stretch. So um, <laughs> we got, yeah, we got a lot of Italians in this house, which is why I'm in the office now full time because yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to be able to, you know, <laughs> Nick, I love how Italian you are though. I really do. Yeah. Hey, yeah. My, I'm the American in the house. My wife's Italian. I'm <laughs> right. yeah. Italian, but I'm the American as they go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, Cons was nice enough to give us a little bit of a frago and let us know that he's got a bunch of shit. So if you want to just, if you have something to do, you don't want to pay attention. Con's going to do his favorite notes. No. Oh uh, yeah. So I, last few episodes, we haven't really had a reason to dole out any save rounds that are of kind of on the sillier side. That's okay. You guys just, I want you to get comfortable. Go ahead and get comfortable. Everybody listening, please get comfortable. All right. Number one, uh, shout out to uh, James Laporta over there at task and purpose. He tweeted out and might still be tweeting out as we record this, all the names of the fallen from the, the war in Afghanistan and not just their names, but a little blurb about each of them. And he, I don't think he didn't have to do that. He just did that on his own accord. And I thought that was really great. Uh, so the neat thing about him. that was seeing people. I did it myself yeah. when my friends popped up on that list, like people adding their own stories underneath that yeah. person's name or the gold star families adding stories about that person. Or it was just kind of, it was very sad, but it was also very neat to learn more about these service members. It was very cool by him. Yes. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate that from James. Uh, two interesting things of note, uh, a monument and a name, as we've seen a lot of the names of the different military bases come under scrutiny for being named after Confederate leaders and generals. Right now, there is a large effort down at Fort Benning. I didn't even know who the Benning guy was until I looked it up. But anyway, that's looking to be renamed after uh, Lieutenant General Hal Moore from, you know, We Were Soldiers uh, book and movie uh, notoriety and obviously had a very storied military career. Uh, would love to see that happen. He's obviously a very deserving individual to have a military base named after him. To that end, uh, there is a new monument up at West Point to honor the Buffalo Soldiers, the uh, enlisted uh, soldiers who taught the cadets uh, horsemanship back when that was still a thing. Uh, so they made a really nice monument, a gentleman on a horse. It's really big. I think it's like 10 or 13 feet high. It's pretty wide. looks really cool. Love to see that uh, they're, they're getting their, their just due there. Chaps, I noticed, do you have AstroTurf on your deck? I do. I saw That's that too. Interesting move. We'll Does your it. family do burlap sack races across it? Like the Brady? No, Brady the Bunch? reason why is because it's, uh, as you know, it's Texas and yes. the regular wood or anything like that gets extremely hot. Very like, hot. And yes. The dogs, when they come out, if they come out there with their pads, it will burn their pads. So mm. I got AstroTurf to put it down. So their pads are going to be a lot more healthy. And it also keeps down on the dirt because as you know, decks get super dirty. This allows me to just spray it off instead of constantly having dirt and all that shit on it. Fantastic. It. Fantastic. Uh, more recently, I've been watching The Amazing Race. And one of the challenges was to eat an ostrich egg. I didn't realize that's equal to 24 normal size eggs. Did you guys know that? No, I thought would, maybe I mean, it was like four or eat, five. No, you eat one ostrich egg, you're going to be in round number two, big time. Yeah, big time. But I feel like I could fart still do that. Some. Spider fucking. I no, feel like I could still do that. I think it was fart round. Right. Um, Come fart round, right. Continuing with eating, Kate, it appears you eat a lot of pudding. So, dude, I got, I'm over beets now. I'm, I'm past yeah. beets. I'm into pudding. Okay. That's yesterday's news beets. I've beets been in eating. The back door. To say there's been days where I've eaten five to six packs in a day. Wow. We're talking fun snacks. Or are you making your own? No fun snacks, because here's why I tell myself if I made my own, I would eat the whole thing. And so isn't if you dumped all the pudding packs out into a bowl, it's really not that much. That's what we do with goldfish in this house. We used to get the big bag of goldfish. We're like, oh, it saves money. Next thing you know, I'm eating like 700 goldfish. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
And as I cannot stop though, I'm, I'm calling it putting, you know, people first, it was like quinoa and then it was a Kai or whatever it is. Acai, acai. Acai, yeah. And then it was whatever up next pudding hyperbole telling you it's so smooth. So cold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ugh. All right. And finally, my beloved army black Knights are back in action this Saturday as they square off against the uh, Georgia state, whatever they are. Bulldogs, losers, maybe. the Georgia yeah. state, loser Georgia state losers. Yeah. So uh, exactly. football is back in full effect this weekend. I'm excited for college football to be back. And then next weekend we'll have the NFL back as well. So our fall weekends are here. It was 65 degrees this morning. I was outside in a vest very comfortably. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day uh, on the heels of that hurricane. So that's all I have. I hope everyone has a very, very enjoyable last weekend of the summer as we really charge hard into fall. Yeah. And I want to dry out everybody up there, dry out too. There's a lot of people that are going to be, yeah. it sucks that they're, they're going to be dealing with that and that cleanup process too. Um, my little save around here is that I am so glad that my jacuzzi is finally getting fixed Ooh. since I've been living here. My jacuzzi has been messed can't up. can't start the show with, Oh, my pool fountains are messed up. Oh, my jacuzzi. You end it with, Oh, my jacuzzi's goofing. Well, The guy's out there fixing it right now. Oh like he's fixing God. both of those things. Cause I wouldn't have been able to hmm. do that at all and i got a um air conditioner at my shop which i'm very happy about that's that's good sweating all over the place um it's been i i just want to say it's been a a crazy couple weeks but i have been very encouraged by the veteran community and how much for the most part stuck together and tried to accomplish great things together it's been really awesome to see september is the start of suicide awareness month and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention of how much people are struggling right now there's plenty of organizations that you can reach out to if you don't know what that is hit us up we'll actually put it on our instagram page tomorrow a bunch of different ways that you can reach out to folks if you need to don't be ashamed to do that the commandant of the marine corps reached out to all the different Marines and really everyone and saying it takes a little bit of courage to step up, but you have that within you. You could do hard things. And it's something I believe in big time. I'm very, very happy and very proud of the military community for how much they stuck together, no matter how incompetent the politicians were, the military was ready to step up and do what was needed. And that was fucking awesome. And everybody that reached out to us and was thankful for the things that we're doing. It's a privilege to be able to talk to you guys and be able to have this platform and you listen to us. Um, so I'm incredibly thankful. This is the job that I, I really, really believe in. I love, and it, I would do it for free. Um, that's all I want to say. Oh, oh, I'd be remiss. It's a 96. Yes. Safe sex is great sex. So you better wear, hold up, hold up. My mind is always <laughs> nice. uh, safe sex is great sex. So you better wear a latex because you don't want that latex that I think I'm latex. So wrap it up. It's on the retreat. Fuck me, right? I guess I don't get Oh, shit. Around. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> wow. Sorry, Kate. What's yours? What's oh, yours? Wait, you 96? said nothing, didn't you? I thought pudding was yours. No, oh, that no. was mine. Pudding was a caveat. Oh, yeah. to caveat off the CO. Yes. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> and, so, so, and I'm about to bring it back down here okay. for a second. Get All serious. Right. Um, just sending so much love. They're searching still for those five U.S. sailors um, who their helicopter fell off an aircraft carrier into the sea off the coast of San Diego this week. Um, they're still searching for them. Um, just sending so much love. It's devastating. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then just super quick update on those wounded in the blast in Kabul. There's 15 still being treated at Walter Reed. Um, one critical, three serious and 11 in stable condition. I'm seeing letter writing campaigns go around. If you see it, send them a letter, just send them something goofy, maybe something about, uh, spiders who want to fuck or, uh, uh, don't do that though. Maybe a fart story. Maybe don't do that either. Uh, maybe something about pudding. That's all I have. It's on the retreat. <laughs>